I was looking at the comments on my YouTube videos the other day when you I should make the mystery shack. Try making the mystery shack. Love it if you made should do the mystery shack. Please make the mystery shack. Now don't get me wrong. I love Gravity Falls. It's one of my all-time favorite shows, and I love the Mystery Shack, but a lot of crafters have made it already, including the always wonderful Dr. Toys and N-Scale Dystopia, amongst many others. So I thought I'd try something a little different. That, and I'm also planning to build something a bit bigger later this year. Welcome back to Midnight Hobbies, and today I'll be making the Gravity Falls Water Tower, with Mageddon style. I'm sure many of you are concerned by the amount of shapes boxes I use for my crafts, so today we're going the healthy route and using a Maltesers box instead. I just need to change that. So I started by breaking down the box, I think I've read this one before, and then removing any side flaps so that I'm left with a panel I can twist into the water tank. And after marking the width I wanted, I removed the excess with a ruler and then bent it into a cylindrical curve. I then sketched out a center line so that I could cut out two cipher eye holes that were made from Dipper and Stanford's little spaceship adventure, and then the seam was connected using a piece of crafting stick and hot glue. And for the roof, we're using math with this mathomat to sketch and cut a perfect circle. Then with a center slice, I rolled it into an adequately sized cone. To add shingles, I'm once again using the crafter's hack where you make them as strips instead of singular tiles, with alternating bends and an unmeasured trim to leave you with a wonderfully twisted strip that can be stuck straight on. Though in full honesty, singular shingles would have been easier in this case as the curve of the roof made it hard for them to stay put, but I got there eventually. And to finish it off, I added a smaller cone with a rounded piece of foam on top. And with the roof done, it was time to give the tank some muscle. I cut crafting sticks to size that I then textured with a blunt hobby knife to give them more of that delicious wood grain. They were then stuck on with hot glue and repeated until it was fully covered. Oh, I love fitting in the final piece. And with the wood done, it was time to give it its balcony. So using some foam board and the power of math again, I cut out a circle and then traced the circumference of the tank on top. I then imprinted a wood texture onto the balcony using a pencil and a hobby knife. I probably should have continued the texture on the whole top, but what can you do? Now, it's not a Midnight Hobbies build without some tissue box, so with this side panel, I sketched and cut the world's skinniest onion ring to act as the handrail. And with some spindly cuts of crafting stick, I made the supporting post that I then stuck into place around the balcony. Not bad, but let's take a look under the hood. Ooh. I added some pieces of crafting stick to make the support beams underneath, and then for the legs, I sliced thin strips of more crafting sticks and snapped them into demonic legs. I know in the show it has the concrete weights at the bottom, but I wanted mine to look more like the unnerving spider version we see in this two second clip, so we'll just say that the weirdness washed the concrete away. Now you're probably looking at this thinking, hmm, that doesn't look structurally sound, and you're right, using very thin pieces of crafting stick to hold up the grunt of the weight wasn't my smartest decision, but we're all about the aesthetic here, opposed to functionality. With offcuts of crafting stick, I added a broken ladder to the side, and with another added a little strip of foam to make the antenna for the roof. Thin strips of tissue box were added as the metal bands, and with these little details finished, it was then time to make that tongue. With this little offcut of foam I had lying around, I cut out a sharp tongue. I needed to add an extension as it wasn't long enough for my liking, and it then received a wire colonoscopy so that I could bend it into its signature waggle. Once it was fitted and I was happy with how it looked, it was time to paint. I feel like I'm forgetting someone though. Maybe old man McGucket can help me out. It's a piece of shit with housework. <gasps> Sweet sarsaparilla! Mixing together some black paint and Mod Podge, I primed all of the pieces with a thick coat. Then starting with a raw sienna, I began haphazardly painting the water tank, and after mixing a lighter shade with some white, I gave it a good old dry brushing. Yeah. 
A chocolatey brown was then given to the roof and any other wood texture, followed by a dry brushing of the raw sienna from the tank to tie it all together and to make those edges pop. Pink was given to the tongue and whilst that dried I went round with some metallic silver on the bands and antenna. The tongue got glazed with some gloss mod podge but I didn't like how pale it looked so I went over it with a red gloss mod podge mix. Using the off cuts of crafting stick from before I painted them white and stuck them in to act as the chompers so that the tower could properly articulate itself. The fitness grand pacer test is a And then as a little easter egg I painted the town famous big muffin. Um it's a giant explosion. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh the uh giant explosion. <laughs> kind of does look like a muffin. <laughs> <laughs> The teeth then got a little kiss of red, and with the tower out of the way, it was time to make a base. Using this crumbly XPS foam that has become the bane of my existence for how it gets everywhere, I mapped out how big I wanted my base to suit the tower. And for those following at home, now's a great time to accidentally break one of the model's spindly spider legs. Uh, we can fix that. Once sliced out, I began chipping away at the foam using my fingers and hobby blade to give it a rocky texture. I wanted the tower to be moving uphill so I glued on another piece of foam to give it the slant and filled in the gaps with off cuts. It was then drowned in plaster and received many layers of a flat black primer. I started painting it with a burnt sienna followed by a dry brushing of raw sienna to highlight the edges and then base coated some foam stones with a dark grey. The stones were then followed up with light grey and white dry brushing and man I feel like I could dry brush forever, I love it. And once I highlighted a footpath down the middle I moved on to some flocking. So with some static grass I coated both sides of the path with some medium green goodness. I shook off the excess and was left with this beautiful piece of real estate ready to be conquered by a living water tower. So I began to stick all the pieces together. And it was at this point that the fault in my legs ruled supreme as the angle I had glued the mat made it impossible for it to hold the head without falling or breaking. So in the end I stuck it down backwards to the head and added some braces for extra support. The water tank was glued in place and then in my first time using it I decided to add some clump foliage to the base for some extra flavour. And once it all dried it was time to whip out my 17 cameras and capture those beauty shots. Thank you so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all my subscribers getting me to 10,000. I can't believe I'm already there, and I'm glad you're enjoying my content so much that you've decided to stick along for the ride. I know this video came out a little later than planned, but hoping to get onto a better schedule for the upcoming builds. But thank you again for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.